Dean, we have a great interview with yes, us today. Do. Who do we have with us today, my friend? We have this young man who makes so many waves with what he's doing. Mm -hmm. He's a branding expert. He is known for his praise breaks. Mm -hmm. If you watch those videos on Instagram, you'll see the praise breaks and you'll see the church stuff. This gentleman is doing it all. He's also a host and I believe he is a jurisdictional um, minister of music or choir director with the Grand Ole Church of God in Christ. Well, I thought you was going to say jurisdictional prelate. No, I didn't know that prelate. Yeah, cause, I mean, He's a prelate in the, in the music. No, no I'm just saying because the way you, you, you started to say it, you know, yes. you, you got very, very proper. When you get real proper, you get ready to introduce the prelates and everything. This, like you know, I go into my preaching spirit. Yes, yes. preach the Lord. And he's also a recording artist. Ladies and uh -huh. gentlemen, if you have watched anything on Instagram with church stuff, this is the gentleman behind it, Mr. Marquise Jelks. Welcome to the Wake Up Morning Show Thank with Dr. L.T. and Robert L. Dean. Thank you for having me. I'm excited to be on. Yes. Well, brother, I'm just going to just start off, you know, uh, every show that when we get an interview, you know, sometimes they have to come in with a beef. Well, but uh, but today, you ain't had a beef in a long time. I thought God delivered but, you. Okay, now I was trying to I was trying to finish up, and you just keep, keep cutting me off. Because I thought you got you delivered. Know, I, it, can you just let me finish? Yeah, go for what I want to say. Go forth. Okay, thank you so much. God but today you. I don't have a beef. You know, um, um, you know. I think that laughter is good medicine for the soul. Yes, it is. And it's so amazing that we could take things that we see each and every day and, and find laughter in it. So tell me, how did you get involved with the church? You know, the the uh, the, the, the Instagrams and the things that church literally breaks. have people uh, cracking up. Yes, and, sir. And, and literally, and I want to say this, and literally lighting their day yes. and lighting their day. Mm -hmm. So how'd you get started? Well, I got started because I got into management. I wanted to be a a manager for people within involved in the gospel industry. And of course, you know, on social media, you need a social media presence. Yes. You know, that's how you're going to grow your business. That's how you're going to grow your, you know, get your downloads and your streams and get notoriety. So me being the church kid that I am, I prayed and was like, God, I need a presence on social media. I need my Instagram to grow. I need for people to see my clients. I need people to take me serious. So, I just had a, a normal personal Instagram page, Marquise Jokes. For fun, every Sunday I would just post praise breaks. At that time, Instagram, your videos were like only 15 seconds. So I would just post that every Sunday and call it Praise Break Sunday. People would be like, oh, that's so funny. You fucking praise break. So when I prayed about how to get a social media presence and to get more followers, the Holy Spirit told me to turn my Praise Break Sunday into its own Instagram page. So then I created the page praise breaks underscore commercial breaks. And that's how we got started. And then it literally just took on and blew up from there. And you have you have so many choirs and stuff that you feature who I know about. And one specific one is Eddie Boucher and Fulfillment out of San Diego. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, Thank you yes. for that. I've been You're more than welcome for, for years. Um, oh, really? Okay. Good deal. Good deal. You know, I've always prayed for a platform to give other people. I literally would say that in my phone. I'm like, God, give me a space to give other people. Give me a platform to give other people. And sometimes when you pray, you're thinking it's going to happen a certain way. Right. And before I knew it, when my social media took off, it hit me one day. I said, this is the platform that I prayed for to give other people, you know? So God answered my prayer. So so let, let me ask you this question. Um, many times when you, you take uh, a different road, uh, uh, somewhere being a trailblazer in the industry, people are quick to judge or to make um, uh, comments. How did you balance mm. off the negativity mm. that might have come, or did even did the negativity come? It's a negativity. The negativity is weird. Okay. <laughs> so um, the thing about it is, this is cliche, but I got to say it. People will always talk. I don't care how well you do things. That's I right. don't care how great you do That's things. Right. I don't care how bad you do things. So I, I basically, I try to live my life into, to be the type that I don't let too much praise affect me and I don't let negativity affect me, you know? So it's just a mindset. 
and it's a renewed mindset that I have to tell myself every day, you know? So that's all that is. Okay. So, you know, uh, I'm not trying to count your coins or anything else. Count my coins. Come on. Uh, but I want to ask the question, ha has, has this uh, platform been a blessing in your coin area? When I started my Instagram, this is 2023. So when I started in 2014, I had been out of job for 12 years. And I quit that job in 2015. Mm -hmm. And because of social media, I started my own business. So, wow. yes. Okay. <laughs> and, and, and so the, the reason why I ask that is that um, I believe that people need to understand that when you, when God gives you something and he gives you a vision, he will also make it where it is your provision. Mm -hmm. And uh, mm -hmm. a lot of times people might not understand or even comprehend, but that was not designed for them. It was designed it. for what God has That's did it. for you. And so That's I'm going to pass over to my uh, my colleague, uh, Earl Dean, because I know you're chomping at the bit to ask a couple more questions. We just had Ace of Ward here for his master class. Love him. And, love him. Mentor. Love him. Everybody had something to say as he directed it to them. And I was talking about people um, not taking advantage of the platforms that I've tried to help them, like up and coming singers and artists. Mm -hmm. How do you now guard people coming to you to get all your knowledge but don't never invest because Ace of War told me from this point on people have to invest in you. You will not be accessible anymore. So how did you oh, absolutely. How did you get to that level? Be a direct person. You have to be direct. And still so when I say direct, I'm very nice. I'm very personable. I'm very friendly. But sometimes people will take that and they'll just try to use you and you know, so you mean to tell me you want my knowledge to make you a millionaire. But then I don't reap any benefits of it. No, this is my business. This is what I do. And obviously you think a lot of my knowledge, so you should be well, willing to pay for it. I used to, when I started out, Robert, I literally had a heart for everybody because I knew what it was to not have the resources. I knew what it was not to have the money. So that would make me really just be there for people. Yes, but then I realized people do what they want to do. You can sit up here and tell me my prices are too high or you don't have the money. But then tomorrow I see you in a pair of Jordans that just came out. Just I see you in a pair of Yeezys. I see you in Louis Vuitton back. So what is more important to you? Obviously, these shoes are more important. What I have to offer, you don't care about your business or your brand. So you just have to become very direct and say, hey, this is how we do this. This is what we're going to do. And it's about respect. This is what we do for a living. You know, this is our, our job. They're not going to come sing to you for free. They're not going to come preach at your event for free. So, and I had one of them tell me, well, all you're doing is just talking to me. Da, da, da. I don't care. Maybe you should start a job where all you're doing is talking and it's easy for you, you know? Right. So you just have to be direct. So it is what it is. Well, you know, uh, I'm going to say directly, you know, I, I can't afford the Yeezys, Jeezys, or anything else. I'm still wearing the ponies from Kmart. <laughs> you know, <laughs> do you have a blue light special? <laughs> <laughs> life and death is in the power of your tongue and if you say you can't afford it you ain't gonna be able to afford it That's so right. you gotta change your words your words have power and, on, and, and, and see see and that that's one of the things that that, that that's one of the things that I think is very important is that you know you don't you didn't come back with well da, 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 da. you actually came back with the word and I think that's what's important that's it your yeah. words your word what you sing mm -hmm. has power even your heart and your mind that's why now I'm a I'm a I love to joke but I'm even careful with certain jokes because the atmosphere all it knows is words it doesn't know that you're joking right. mm -hmm. so whatever you say is giving life to that you yeah. know to that situation or that. So I try to be very careful and mindful of what I say. Amen. Amen. And so let, let me ask you this. Um, if you were to not uh, be doing this right now, what other profession would you be in? A teacher. I would be a teacher. Okay. But you're teaching now. Mm -hmm. that, exactly. So that's why I would be in a classroom setting. Okay. I would literally be with students and kids. I'll okay. probably be a history teacher. Okay, because, uh, you know, the funny thing about it is, but the social media is your classroom now. And you're it's able my to, to um, you're right. actually impact uh, the world and do teaching. Tell me, how do people connect with you or, or receive your services? And what are your specific services? Anything that they need, I can do. <laughs> so uh, social media management, we have a lot of people 
who say, oh, I, I have a Facebook for my business. I have a Instagram, but I don't have the time to run it. I don't keep up with posts, all of that. I do social media management, content creating. I do advertising and marketing. If people have events and they need a strategy, if they have a record that came out, I help them with strategy, getting them interviews and helping them. I literally do everything. Not just church stuff, even though that's my niche, but I do other people with other businesses and things like that. So all things social media, I handle. Now, um, and this this a ballpark. If someone's coming to you, got a brand new project out and wants to uh, get presence and, and spins and views, um, what type of budgetary range should they be prepared to be in? Um, oh, it just really depends. Like, I have a lot of different packages because I like to be able to work with people. So, you know, I have the more exclusive pack packages that are that include a comma. Mm -hmm. Then I have packages that don't include any commas. Mm -hmm. You know, so it just really depends. They, I'll send them my sheet and all of that and i am there i'm all things to all man i can literally help them with anything if they say marquise this is what i have all right i could create something for you with that you know wow that's wonderful. so so you're basically like a, a boutique special specialized yes. for each okay absolutely absolutely and the reason I, why I'm, I, I go ahead you know the reason why i'm asking these questions because i know that we have creatives online uh right now and are tuning in and i want them to understand that as much as you know you're you're talking about the business you also are you are savvy enough to know that you can do different packages and still help them but you can't get the cadillac version if you got pinto money come on you get what you pay for it yeah it's that simple you get what you pay for it. sometimes they'll listen to my testimonials um and then they'll say okay i want this to happen for me okay well i can't do that with fifty dollars yeah. this person has invested in it and i've been working with them for a year and another thing I can tell people with social media, a lot of times they depend on one post to make them viral. It's not going to happen like that. Yeah. Normally, most of the people that go viral, it never was in their mind, I'm going to post this, I'm going to go viral. Right. It just happened by accident. You know, it's a game of chance, social media is. Right. So you just have to pursue and remain consistent. A lot of people don't remain consistent. They just do it sporadically. Nothing's going to happen from that. You have to be, uh, you have to do it every day. Have a plan, have mm -hmm. a strategy, have the intentional that's it mm. have somebody with me that's going to help you and structure it you know mm. now, now how did you get started um did you start off singing like we all did in the sunshine band and then it went from there let's talk about your beginning okay well let's see here my mother was over my music department at my local church first church of god in christ is where i grew up at um and it was just always the love i was definitely the church kid that if I would get in trouble, I couldn't go to church. It was my punishment. My mom was like, okay, you're not going to church tonight. That's how much I loved. I looked forward to choir rehearsal. I looked forward to revival. I looked forward to conferences. You know, she didn't have to beat me over my head to be saved. I just enjoyed it. You, it's, we laugh because that was my punishment. So that it's was your funny, it's you funny ain't going to hear, to church tonight. I've never heard anybody else <laughs> in, my, in, in my life say the Literally. same thing. That was Literally my punishment. Literally my punishment. That was my punishment as well. C continue. I just had to throw that in there. Totally. All, you know, the state conventions and the national conventions, of course, like you all say that you grew up Church of God in Christ. So if you're a culture, who do you automatically love? The Clark sisters. Absolutely love the Clark sisters. My favorite to this day. There's nothing Clark sisters that I don't know. Right. I know who own every rec, all of that. So that, you know, I just had a musical household, you know, my mother singing, my uncles and aunts being a part of the music department. And, you know, that just really shaped me and um, enhanced me and um, just created a love and a passion for it to do it the correct way. Yeah, one, Not one to, of the things you know, that just, I, you know, I'm sorry, sorry. Uh, one of the things that I will say is that what the Church of God in Christ did, especially in the music realm, was it literally prepared us for the world. Um, Absolutely. We, I always tell people that I started touring when I was 12 years old mm -hmm. because mm. we were always traveling. We were always mm. in uh, the the major choir or we we're well, playing. Well, you guys hosted Hanna. your church. Yeah, hosted all the yeah. all the West Coast stuff. Yeah, and then we also traveled a tremendous mm. amount as a mm. choir and as a group. Mm -hmm. You know, Robert mm -hmm. Earl Dean. Um, again, I remember him when he was like four or five years old, and he was singing. They had to put a platform yep. up. For him to, you know, wow. climb up. at your church, yeah. Jackson Memorial Church of God in Christ, yeah. <laughs> Bishop Blake, the first yeah. Blake. Yeah, and the one thing that I always loved and I shared with people um, about growing up in Kojic mm -hmm. was is that mm -hmm. they literally 
every, I mean, we had to do the Easter Sunday. Yep. We had to do so many things, but they put us before the people. And even if we forgot the line, they had to feed us every word. You mm -hmm. would have thought that you had sung, sung the people underneath the table by the way they That's responded. It. Yes. So they That's made it. us, they, they brought us up to be bold, not only in our presentation, mm -hmm. but our love for God. Right. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Absolutely. I agree. So let me ask you this question. Um, you know, I am now in my 50s, uh, a father of one, a grandfather of one, husband of one. Um, uh, where are you at in your journey? Uh, married, kids, uh, baby, uh, 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 baby dog, you know. Hamster. <laughs> yeah, hamster yeah. I am married and dating my career. Okay. But did you say you're yeah. married and dating your career? I am mating and married and dating my career. Okay. I want wait, 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 to. Wait, 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 hold on, hold on, hold on. Because see, you go, you don't get yourself in trouble. Because my wife likes saying, "You cheat on me with the company." <laughs> so <laughs> <laughs> that, that we don't want her coming back and say, "I heard you. Are you cheating on me with the company?" <laughs> That's funny. Well, I am. I'm very much so single, and I literally, I'm committed to. You know, this year, it just my mindset changed. I said there is a lot of procrastination that I've had over the last few years concerning myself. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, sometimes we'll push everybody else and then we lack. We're so busy pushing everybody else that we're too tired to do what we're supposed to be doing. Mm -hmm. This year, I didn't want that. Wow. So I said, if I have to be the guy that does not respond to phone calls and text messages for weeks at a time because I'm working on something for me, for my business, for my career, for my ministry, my brand. So be it. But I hate to say this because of the time we live in, but I'm choosing me and I'm putting me first. The reason why I hate to say that is because uh, the generations that we have now, we don't need to tell them that because that's all they do is right. choose yeah. them and put themselves first. Right. Right. But you know, but for me, you know, I want—I needed that balance. You know, I look at my phone; it's ringing all day, and I'm like, if I answer the phone call for everybody, I don't have any time to do what I need to, to do and what I'm purpose to do. You know, so this year I want to do what I am purpose to do and what God has me to do. You know. So my 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 last question of twenty um, is simply <laughs> this: I, I notice that you have glasses. I know that you have a certain style. Um, any branding things coming up for you or are that you're involved Ooh, in? Ooh, good question. I am a ambassador for uh this black owned frame company called Frame by Cam. Mm -hmm. I just reached out to them. I can't see. These are these aren't glasses for fun. If I take the I would see men as trees if I take glasses off. Mm -hmm. And context, I just don't like I, I, it's too much to keep up with. Yeah. It's too so I rather have glasses. So I get these frames from him. They are a great price. And I go to Bar Optical and get my prescription put in them. And there's that. <laughs> so, and then I also do for a lot of companies or businesses that have hoodies and sweatshirts, I'm their brand ambassador for that. Okay. Yes. Um, how did you start your own ministry with your, your recording artist? You have, you have a single that we're going to play today. Yes. I, ooh, let me see here. Uh, 16 years ago, when I was 19, I started a group called Ministry, just a community choir in my city. And um, we did that for about 10 years. And God just blessed us with the opportunity to record and all of that. And, you know, I never really wanted a community choir because I was just fine working at the church because you all know the stigmas that community choirs have yep. and all the extra drama. I just didn't want it. But it just basically fell into my lap. It was something that everybody wanted, and I loved it. I loved the journey of it. And so, yeah, that's our single that came out in 2017 um, called Pray Fast, and, uh, Pray Fast and Wait with the Good People Club Entertainment label, Damo Farmer. You don't know who Damo, Damo, Damo Farmer, Farmer? And Ruby? And Ruby Green. Yes, and Ruby. Damo yes. is our, our close friend. Get out of here. That's what label I'm on. Yes, those. Yes, Damo Farmer. He produced that with Eddie Brown and that's the Good People Club Entertainment label. Wow. Small world, right? Right. Small, small world. They that's why I don't talk about Angeles. people. You never know who knows anybody. You ne we just said that to somebody yesterday. I never talk about people. You never know. But right. yeah, that's he signed me, took a chance. It all it goes down in the DMs. We didn't know each other. I knew Ruby, but I didn't know that Ruby and Damo were married. Right. 
So we were DMing each other. Well, I was DMing him and was like, hey, sign me. I see you got a label, da 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 Then, so he hit me up the next day. I was like, yeah, my wife was talking about you. I was like, who's your wife? He was like, Ruby Green. I was like, that's my Instagram best friend. What are you talking about? So then it just happened from there. Wow. Yeah. One of the things about it there, uh, you're in a good place because they are very, very good people. Integral. Uh, Definitely. They're sweet and Definitely. they're kind and, um, and they're accessible. And I always say to people that uh, just because you are in the realm of being considered famous and doing a lot of things, you still treat people the way you want to be treated. And that's the one Hello? thing I love about them is that. I think you know, that should make you nicer. That should yeah. make you more, you know, as God expands you. Yeah. And enlarges your territory. To me, that makes you, that creates more humility. It, it should. should. It should. Mm -hmm. well, now, where are you from? A little small village, Decatur, Illinois. Nobody ever knows where I'm from. I hear Atlanta all the time. I hear Detroit. I live in Decatur, Illinois, a small little town. Okay. Now, it's it's now, part of now. Chicago. No, it's not a suburb of Chicago. It's not? No, it's two and a half hours of Chicago. It's literally. Two and a half from Chicago, two and a half from Indianapolis, an hour and a half from St. Louis. We're now, right in the middle. Now, can, can you Central talk Illinois. to me about that famous truck stop that when people come to your city, they, they, they have to go there to eat? Crackles. Okay. Crackles. It's a burger place here. Okay. People love it. People love it. Okay. How'd you hear of it? I, I didn't hear of it. I just know when he said a small town that nobody knows about. Yeah, you they know, always go have a truck stop. Like mom and pop something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. they always oh, go have that like truck it. stop. Yeah, you know they gotta have something. Why are they stopping there? See, they got this burger joint, and you go uh -huh. there. Everybody... You got it. Right, you got it. That's it. You are right. <laughs> yes, yes. So, who were some of your musical influences besides the Clark sisters? Who did you grow up listening to? That, that you really, um, really stuck with you. And, and I don't want you to be obligated to say Leonard and the Leonard Oh, God, Dads. not the Leonard Dads. They, 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 Wrong they, answer. They, 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 they are retired, <laughs> and, uh, but they appreciate your thoughts. Yes. Bless the name of Let's Jesus. Let's see. It's so many. So anybody that knows me know Clark sisters. Yep. I got to say it again. Fred Hammond. When I tell y'all I love Uncle Fred, I Fred Hammond is the... Our, literally every road trip that I took as a child, we had him in. Then, I mean, the great Vanessa Bell Armstrong, um, James Moore, yeah, um, Milton Brunson, Thomas Whitfield, John P. Key. Uh, then let me go into uh, the 90s. Well, Ricky Diller was kind of 90s, 80s. Um, Mary Mary, Tasha Cobbs, 2000s. Ty Privet, who I think is in my opinion, doesn't get enough credit for um, kind of what he brought us into. Just, I love gospel music, period. I love church music. Dietrich had, I love all of them. I love everybody. Mm -hmm. a, a vast, you have a vast yeah. Yes, vast definitely. I, I love it. You yes. Know, you know, I you love know. choir music. I love church music. I love Judy McAllister. I love everything. Walter Hawkins, everybody. Yeah. Well, you, you know, one of the things I want to say about Chai Trippet is, is that um, there were a lot of groups that were on the vein of Chai Trippet but mm -hmm. he saw mm -hmm. it through. A lot Come of times, on. people Come on. had Jones the vision. Because Brent and the TP mob was kind of there. Yeah. No, no, they Brent. were they were Love totally Brent. different. They were uh, urban, but he's urban yeah. too. No, but I'm saying that mm -hmm. he came with the whole energy on stage, the the jumping, even the youthful. clothing. All yeah. of our concerts yeah. for millennials when Ty Tribbett came out, we all are literally. They said, "Well, what y'all wearing this Sunday? What is our uniform?" And we would yeah. say, "Ty Tribbett." That was the uniform. Yeah. And, and, <laughs> you know, and everybody knew what that meant. Yeah, and the reason and the reason why I say that is because mm -hmm. I actually um, worked with a group that literally came before Ty Tribbett. Everything that Ty Tribbett was doing, they were doing, but they were not disciplined, so they mm. did not complete the course. And and the message is is that it might be different. I think about you know Adrian Ewans and the Steps of Praise when they first started off. Everybody said they was going to hell because they were doing dancing and hip hop to gospel music, and then God elevated them to tour with Kurt Franklin and everything else and now every church got a praise team or a hip hop team or something of that nature so I, I, I encourage people to see things through if God gives you the vision he will give you the provision don't mean you ain't going to be talked about you know what I'm saying but eventually if you stay the course because you know that God has called you to do it he will then fight your battles for you Can come I get on it, man? that's it Man, right. so, well, that's right. well, we have to remember nothing's new under the sun because you had Tone before them, Tone to be slave, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and Kirk had, Franklin, and yeah, Kirk Franklin before him, you had <sighs> Brent Jones when they were wearing mm -hmm. the color. 
Um, Everything that comes out yes. is a challenge. Vicky yeah. Winans, she had was dancing. dancers on the Tremaine stellar. was dancing right. and Vicky was dancing yeah. and they dogged her Tremaine, even not when everybody's Fall, singing out. the dances. No, and I'll... the thing about it is I listened to Stump, which was a controversial controversial song and for my age group when that came out um, in the late 90s. I want to say 1998, 99. I listen to that song today and say, what was the problem? This, we, there was so much controversy over something. Did they not listen to the lyrics? Was oh, it just the well, that? Wait, hold, hold, on, hold on, hold on, hold on. It, it happens. Cause hold, it, hold, on, hold on, hold on. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. There's a couple of things I'm going I'm to jump in on. Mm -hmm. um, it wasn't the lyrics. Okay, well, They got it? caught up in the person. Because mm. Salt, who loves God, yes, was mm -hmm. put on the thing, and they were like, "Well, she she doesn't have a song called Push It,' and now she's gonna say pray." And they got caught up not in the message, but they got it caught up in the person that and was the person. on it, and that was the sad point because many people missed the message. But let's just jump further back to your favorite group when they came out. You brought the sunshine. Everybody said they was going to hell with that song. Remember jump that back before then, an old happy day was considered before mm -hmm. its time. Yeah. So it's really just really learning how to focus in on one, the message, the purpose. And I believe that when you really are letting God lead you and guide you, you know, they're still going, there still will be talking, there'll be chatter, but you know, there's some things that come out and it's just foolishness. And That's I tell it. that to everybody, foolishness is just foolishness, mm -hmm. but some things come out and it's just different. It's just like, you know, we look at Kirk. You know what mm -hmm. I'm saying? And Kirk has been able to cross over and transcend uh, uh, to secular and literally saying Jesus and everything else on secular mm -hmm. arenas that they used to didn't even allow to happen. But he ushered in a way for That's other it. people who, to go. Who did it before him? Andre Crouch. Go mm -hmm. back and there you go. Absolutely. He's, on, Absolutely. he's on Madonna's video. Um, he's color purple. That's all yeah. Andre Come Crouch. On. Yeah. Even the wine is singing background for Anita Baker. Yeah. A, a, a lot of stuff. So there's always going to be the first person who God allows to be the creative that will That's have it. to take it for the for the team. And, or the and, rest of it. Uh -huh. and, and, and like like he, he uses the word, it says go out in the highways and the byways and propel mm -hmm. men. You cannot just stay in the four corners of your and church and, and win souls. And so there has to be somebody that goes on those secular journeys to win them in because, hold on, but because the one thing about it is, is that you will hear so many testimonies of secular artists that hire mm -hmm. Christian backgrounds mm -hmm. and Christian musicians and how that changed their lives. Mm -hmm. look, look, at, look at Christina Aguilar and all them. Their whole band is church church guys mm -hmm. and they've had they've prayed for her and they've taken her to church and and the list goes on and on look at look at what james cleveland was doing back in the day singing mm -hmm. with everybody shirley season with michael jackson and she prayed for him the list goes god is on bigger on. god is bigger than what we make him to be mm -hmm. he's not necessarily concerned with everything that quote unquote church people are yeah. you know god is he's so much bigger and i Thank God for all the artists that you named that took the, the slack and all of that and the scrutiny and ridicule so that we're able to do it. Yeah. But but the flip side is now we've allowed too much to go on and there's no there's no balance in the church. Now okay, well, this is the problem goes on. So this is the problem. We have to pray and and seek God because no Christians are not supposed to judge and all that stuff, people that's on here, but your fruit will tell you what you are. If you're a banana, you won't that's be it. acting like an orange either. So there has to be balance. That's it. That's it. What you said. The thing is, we can go there, but we can't do what they do because then our witness is messed up. And that's so, what we're doing now. In God that's it. I can't go and say God has created me to, you know, be background and singing with you and playing for you. But then when they pull out crack, I'm out there doing a line with you. That's not no. That's not how. But we got to be able to show the balance. And that's happened. And that's happened. Mm -hmm. So so sure. we have to go back to um, being the salt of the earth. And we have to go back to being. Who God called us to be, let our light shine. Because well, I have many friends that are background singers and stuff, and many of them mm -hmm. do carry the crossover, mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. people are affected positively. But then there's some who got caught up, and then they're just all over the place, and then well, they're running back to God like they should have never left. Mm -hmm. Well, one mm -hmm. of the things I think that is very, very important is that we have to continue to clean up 
the church. Yes. Because mm. we have not been transparent over the years. And the reason mm -hmm. why so mm -hmm. many people are falling away is because they have been deceived and misled in mm -hmm. the church. Mm -hmm. And so, mm -hmm. first of all, you can't go out and bless other people if you have been taught not how to live saved, but taught how to cover up. Mm -hmm. And some people mm -hmm. find out if you have Come not... On. People think that you remain saved just because you ain't got caught or it ain't been revealed, but you mm. are still dealing with those things. And so I think that as we are trying to win the world, mm -hmm. we have to go back and clean up house. Yes. Come and, on. and just be transparent. You know, if you hoeing in the church, this this go and testify. You know, uh, the uh, I was once a hoe, but and God then I delivered struggled, me. Right. Yeah. Then I struggle because people right. need humans. Yeah. They need to know that Come you're on. human. For so long, we were so heavenly minded that we would know earthly good and we're and our own kids and our mm -hmm. own relatives didn't want to be around us yeah god is not mm -hmm. spooky and all that stuff that's right that's right and i agree what you said dr lt 100 percent. what we've done is with church we've told people hide all of your flaws and your mm -hmm. everything your sins and your failures and come in here then we wonder why everybody's a hypocrite because we taught them to be yeah. we're supposed to like you said come in here hey i'm a whole i'm dealing with this or i'm doing that but we made it to where you got to cover and mask it so then when they find out the truth about somebody, you know, they don't know how to take it, even though they're doing the same thing. Yeah. And, and, and that's the thing. I remember people saying there's no big sin and little sin. This sin is sin. Um, mm -hmm. And it's so important in this season because everybody says, well, the young people are not coming to church. And people are like, they're not coming because we're not being transparent. Mm -hmm. You know, um, mm -hmm. I talk to young people all the time um, about sex. Mm -hmm. Because when growing up, you know, they, they try to make sex seem like it was not fun. It was not enjoyable. Mm -hmm. It was not all that. Right, be you know? real. And, and instead of talking about it, it's that, but there's a responsibility that comes along mm -hmm. with that. There mm -hmm. are soul ties that come, come along on, with come that. On. And then there's also emotions that many times you are not ready to have. Or responsibilities that you are not ready to achieve. So I try to tell people, stop making it a taboo. You know, saying as you grow, as God does this, this is what's going to happen. The same way with, you yeah, know, yeah. Uh, going to a club. If you like mm -hmm. to dance, mm -hmm. going to a club right. ain't going to make you unsafe. You know, mm -hmm. what you do in that club will be there your you testimony and your witness. That's true. Come on. Hey, but, Dr. Two, um, young people want to do what they want to do because this generation, their parents had them at young ages. So they That's were growing true. up with them compared to when we were coming up. Our right. parents were parents because they were most of the time older than us, mm -hmm. so they knew mm -hmm. the separation. You and I both were in the school That's system. It. Most of these young people now were born by 15-year-olds, 16-year-olds, so the parent was trying to still be young, and so they presented what they presented. These young people do what they want to do, go where they want to go. I don't mm -hmm. give them no, no rights or reasons to blame the church because as yeah. soon as the funeral comes, you want to run to the church. As soon as the wedding mm -hmm. comes, you want to run mm -hmm. to the church. Mm -hmm. And but I'm then you say, want to diss the uh, church. Yeah. Right. I'm not going to church. I'm not going to disagree with you, but I'm going to say in addition to Okay. In addition to the reason why our young people are not running to the church is because we've given them too much leeway. Yes, the parents, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. and we mm -hmm. have not held a certain standard and we use for generations my parents made me to go to church that's what I'm not going to force my children to go to church. But mm -hmm. that started before this generation. That yeah. started four generations back. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? And so we have to go back to saying that it's, you know, the same rule. If you live in my house, you're going to abide by my rules. Not, mm -hmm. oh, well, I want you to be a free thinker and everything. Mm -hmm. No, these are the rules. This is what you'll follow. Mm -hmm. and, and Parenting. Was, yeah. That's it. Come yeah. on. Mm -hmm. So I, let, let's get back to this interview. Mm -hmm. So my brother, you've brought out a <laughs> lot of different things um, in this interview. So what's up next for you? Oh, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> uh, whatever God says, I, I think this year I'm going to be committed to my church work. Okay. So, you know, I'm the jurisdictional minister of music for two jurisdictions. My jurisdiction here at home, the Illinois jurisdiction. Uh-huh. And uh, recently, Dubai, Bishop Amir May, the Church of God in Christ, he was appointed. He made me his jurisdictional minister of music for Dubai. Is Jackie so there? I think, no, Jackie's in the, uh, the DR. Gotcha. Uh-huh. And uh -huh. so I'm going to, I think I'll be committed to doing that work. Well, I, I do want to let you know, um, you know, that the, the Lord has called called uh, more people to Dubai. Um 
And if thou thus needeth a briefcase or tambourine <laughs> carrier, thou Come let on. us know, and we will hop <laughs> on the plane. Have you been there? <laughs> Hold on, let me finish my thing. There. Uh, uh, hop with this on the plane and work with you and, and give you content for <laughs> your page. Now you can go. <laughs> wow. So how are you handling two jurisdictions? A calendar. <laughs> Zoom, Zoom choir rehearsals? Zoom. Well, the thing about Dubai is that so we just had our, our our headquarters is in Charlotte, North Carolina. Okay. So we just had an event in Charlotte. Then we have another event in Atlanta. Then we'll be back in Charlotte. Then we don't go to Dubai until October. So I'm really trying to pull it together and um, wisdom on how to do it. So I'm still figuring it out myself. Praise the Lord. And, and, and Praise anybody, the Lord. Your anybody, know, free? Kojic, anybody yep. know Kojic, it's, it's busy. When you're in them, them choirs and... Because we got mm -hmm. women's convention, we got mm -hmm. and we got we have our pre musical tomorrow for our workers meeting. Um, Robert, Robert, Robert. And our workers meeting is all week. Your calendar free in October? My calendar is free whenever Lord says. Uh, yeah, free. I think my calendar is free. October 18th through the 25th. Come to Dubai. October 18th through the 25th. <laughs> all right, wow, my brother. That is, that is amazing at the work you're doing. And people that are listening, you keep hearing this gentleman talk about how he's serving. You okay. got to be under mm -hmm. somebody. Where you can have mm -hmm. somebody praying for you, holding you up. Mm -hmm. A lot of times, you don't want to be active in your church ministry, but you want to be all over the world. That's a loose spirit, and that devil Come will on. beat you down. You got to be surrounded by a covering that is praying for you, holding you up, because the devil comes to kill, steal, and destroy. So he's going to mm -hmm. be attacking you. Even Come if you, even when you're doing good things for the Lord, Come the on. devil's Come job on. is to take you off your course. So That's I admonish it. you to get involved in the usher board. Get involved in something mm, in something. your local church. Yeah. It's a foundation, and it's where you mm -hmm. learn your craft. And it's a sense of community that we all need. We all need a sense. We need a village. We need a community. Mm -hmm. Amen. Yeah. Well, my brother, can you? We're going to continue this conversation offline, but can you share? Uh, with the people, your new song or the song that we're gonna play today, you know, uh, prayer, fast, and wait. Can they find and it? How... <laughs> uh, Robert, go ahead. <laughs> and where will people be able to reach out to you if they want to interview, if they want to hire you? Marquis Jelks at iCloud.com. Spell the Marquise last name. J E L K S. M A R Q M A R Q U I S J E L K S at iCloud.com. Marquise Jelks underscore church stuff on Facebook and Instagram. I'm going to respond to you myself. So DM me, email me, all of that, and let's work. And so introduce the song, and we're going to play it here for the first time. You are listening to Pray, Fast, and Wait. If you have anything before God, you pray, you fast, and then wait, and he's going to bring it to pass. Amen. Right here on GOD, really, one? Dot com. <laughs> 